This film is an introduction to sampling from cooling towers, hot and cold domestic water systems and spa pools based on the techniques shown in detail in film two. Remember, do not put yourself at risk during sampling, either from falls or from working in confined spaces. Always take appropriate precautions to limit your exposure to aerosols from water that might contain Legionelli. Cooling towers are the most common cause of outbreaks of Legionnaire's disease. They can infect large numbers of people because of the volume of aerosol they produce and the distance it can travel. They must be rigorously maintained and the HSE guidance suggests that they should be tested at least quarterly for the presence of Legionella. An open circuit cooling tower transfers heat from water by direct contact between that water and a stream of air. This process causes some water to evaporate, which removes heat and cools the remaining water before it is collected in the tower's cold water basin or pond. A closed circuit cooling tower or evaporative condenser cools a fluid by passing it through a bundle of metal tubes. These are cooled by contact with water passing over them and against a stream of air that also causes some water to evaporate. As air is forced or drawn through the cooling tower, it captures dirt which can be deposited in the water, which along with dissolved solids concentrated by evaporation provides an ideal environment for Legionelli to grow. Growth is most likely in the warmest parts of the system near the heat exchanger, rather than within the cooling tower itself. Over 95% of evaporated water droplets generated in cooling towers can be contained by drift eliminators, reducing the release of potentially harmful aerosols into the atmosphere. For routine monitoring, establish whether the system is under control at all times. Samples should be taken when the risk would be expected to be greatest. When the biocide concentration is at its lowest, either just before the next dose is due, or after the tower has been switched on in the morning, if it does not operate at night. In an outbreak, collect samples as soon as possible. Pumps must be switched off. Wait for the aerosols to disperse. Review the paperwork, including the schematic diagram. Find out if there is a risk assessment in place and review use of biocide sampling schedule and microbiology results. If it is safe, inspect the cooling tower pond, pack and drift eliminators. Insufficient access may be enough cause to close down the system. It should look clean, without significant signs of corrosion or algal growth and no scale or other fouling on or within the pack. Water should be clean with minimal sediment in the pond and the surfaces should not feel slimy. The water distribution system should be intact and clean. If the drift eliminators show uneven discoloration or patches of moss, it suggests that there are faults within the tower which should be investigated. There should be a sample tap on the pipe returning the water to the tower distribution system. This is the water that is most likely to contain the Legionelli. Flush the tap and disinfect before collecting a post-flush sample. If pressure is high, water can come out in a spray. Control with a length of clean, sterile tubing on the tap to feed the sample into the bottle and by opening the valve a minimal amount. There may also be a sample tap on the pond, particularly in evaporative condensers. This should be situated as far as possible from the freshwater inlet. If there are no sample taps, take a dip sample from the pond as far from the freshwater inlet as possible. If the only inspection hatch is close to the freshwater inlet, ensure that fresh water is not entering. Take photographs of where samples are taken and the condition of the tower as evidence. Domestic hot and cold water systems are a potential cause of outbreaks. The larger and more complex the water distribution system is, like in hospitals and hotels, the more prone they are to colonization. But systems in private homes can be a source of infection too. When monitoring or investigating hot and cold water systems, it is essential to measure water temperature. Examine the system from where water enters the building, working through the intermediate stages of tanks, water softeners and water heaters to the points of use. If they can be accessed safely, 
examine inside tanks and collect dip samples or by siphoning water out of the tank. The inside of the tank should not be dirty or excessively corroded. Water should be clear, with no obvious scum or film on the surface, which would indicate insufficient turnover. There should be no more than 24 hours storage in any tank. Water temperature should be very close to the temperature of the incoming mains and below 20 degrees Celsius. Water softeners should have a sample point downstream. Sample here to confirm whether it has become colonized. Expansion vessels may be plumbed into systems. They contain synthetic rubber bladders and may become colonized with legionellae. Water samples can be collected from the drain valves where these are fitted. Some systems are fed directly off the mains and may not have any storage tanks. Legionellae in hot water systems are most commonly found at the bottom of a calorifier. Cold water entering at the bottom and hot leaving the top means there will be a zone of temperature ideal for the growth of Legionellae. Sediment and scale may also build up encouraging growth. Calorifiers should be fitted with anti-stratification pumps run daily for one to two hours. This should raise the temperature at the bottom near 60 degrees centigrade to pasteurize the water. A sample collected from the drain valve of the calorifier will provide evidence of Legionellae within the calorifier, but specialist help may be needed. Increasingly, plate heat exchanges are used. Whilst these are not a focus for growth, a hot water storage or buffer vessel installed with them can be. If a suitable drain valve is available, a sample should be collected. For routine monitoring, select sample points representative of the whole hot and cold water systems. The nearest and furthest from a water heater or the cold water supply. Samples should be collected from outlets that have no blenders or thermostatic mixers on them. When investigating a case or outbreak, target the outlets each patient has used or been exposed to. Take pre-flush samples. Post-flush samples are usually only collected during follow-up investigations. Use temperature monitoring to identify any cool parts of the hot water system and warm parts of the cold water system for sampling. Spa pools are the third most common cause of Legionnaire's disease. The pool water is filtered and should be chemically disinfected as it is not drained and cleaned or refilled after each use. The water is at 30 to 40 degrees Celsius, ideal for Legionella growth. Bubbles are created by sucking air into jets or by a separate air blower system. Without careful management, spa pools can become heavily colonized with Legionellae. Spa pools in commercial situations should be of overflow design with a balance tank. Look at the risk assessment and schematic. Turn off air and water circulation. Check maintenance records and look at monitoring results, both microbiological and chemical. Ask how often the balance tank is cleaned and how often poolside monitoring is carried out. Examine the immediate environment for any signs of pool maintenance and note the design and mode of operation. Ensure that the pool and overflow channel, if fitted, are clean. Look under the grid, if possible, on the overflow channel. Collect a sample from the pool. Investigate the pipe work and look for evidence of biofilm. In an outbreak investigation, take swabs from behind air and water jets and the headrests. If possible, examine the balance tank. This should be cleaned once a week. Water should be clear with no obvious tide line. The balance tank is more likely to test positive for Legionellae than the pool itself, so in outbreaks a sample must be taken. In addition to the three main causes of outbreaks covered here, there are many other potential sources. These will require individual assessment before you can take samples safely. But systems that are correctly risk assessed and well maintained should suppress the growth of Legionellae so that there is no risk to health.